Good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's Dr. Lisa coming to you from Tampa, Florida, where I continue my daily lives connecting, reaching out, speaking, and most importantly, asking why. As you all probably know, if you've been listening, I am a primary care internal medicine physician, triple board certified with additional anti-aging and regenerative medicine and obesity medicine. And I lead a very busy practice here in Tampa, Florida, navigating through this COVID-19 pandemic. My motto throughout my life has been not to accept what I see on the surface as the end all be all and to consistently ask why. That is exactly why this time has called me to step forward with a louder voice than I typically have on a broader scale. And I wanna share something that was really interesting because I heard a quote, the same quote, two times in less than 24 hours and I've never heard this quote before. So I wanted to read it to you. Anytime things like that happen with me, it's always a sign that I'm supposed to pursue it, share it, there's a message. So this quote is by Daniel Patrick Moynihan, and it is, everyone is entitled to his own opinion, but not his own facts. Everyone is entitled to his own opinion, but not his own facts. So where did I hear it? Well, yesterday I had a meeting um, with a, a potential collaborator, a business meeting, and he was going over the importance of knowing your demographics and your business in and out, and used the quote just as a really amazing business tip, um, just coaching kind of tip. And so I thought it was interesting, I listened. And then I saw the video I posted on my Facebook on my feed this morning with Tony Robbins, who I absolutely think, think is incredible. I don't know anyone who would think otherwise what that man has been able to do. And one of the first things he says in that video is that quote. So we're gonna sit with that just for a minute. And I wanted to talk about Tony for a minute. Uh, he is, as most of you know, if you haven't watched any of his videos, just incredible in mindset and motivation and had a really rough upbringing and has been able to turn it around to influence the world in so many ways. And he feeds um, hungry people all over and he motivates and puts on seminars. And I was lucky enough to actually have a couple of connections with him so far. And one is his big event that he does Unleash the Power Within, where he has 10, it's like 10 or 12,000 people that attend. So comment below if you've been to one of Tony's events. Um, I went with my mom and my two sisters uh, about, gosh, a year and a half ago. And he has you so captivated. Um, two, two things that struck me with that event, actually. Um, let's start with that. One is that I walked in and I was really blown away emotional actually about the number of men that were present so in my world a lot of times the people that are speaking out that are connecting that are tapping in and doing the self-work it seems like it's more women the men have a rougher time they've been you know you guys have been brought up in this cultural macho ego must you know always be on my game mentality and I walked in and saw men that were loving and with partners and ready to explore and open up and it and it, it flooded me and then we were there all day and you literally don't eat you don't want to eat he has you so captivated and if you've been there you know what I'm talking about so he has gone all, all over the world and he puts on these seminars and what he does at the end is he has, or at the end of the first night, you're there from like noon until one or two in the morning. You're so taken with his dynamics and his mindset and his, what he's saying and the energy in the room that you don't care if you eat or pee or any of these things. And right before you go home, he has you walk literally on fire. So he has you so kind of just up and in and shows the power of yourself. And we did it. We walked on these coals and our feet weren't burned. And he has people checking to make sure you're in the right mindset where you're in yourself. And, and that's a message that's so important right now. 
he has people screening to make sure before they try this that they are connected to themselves, which is what's not happening with this pandemic right now. A lot of people are not connected to themselves. They're connected to the narrative. An interesting sidebar is that somebody tried to put on event, an event similar to what Tony does, and this is what the story that I heard in Hawaii, and out of the however many people that walked on the flames, some certain percentage, like a high enough one, they, they actually burned their feet and over flooded the hospitals there. So he, that particular person got in big trouble. And the, and the point is when we lead from pure intent, when the energy's there, when we are motivating from within, we can do just about anything. So make sure that you are motivated from within, that you're tapping within, that you're not separating from your own intuition. As we navigate re-entering back into society, the next steps moving forward from this COVID pandemic. The clip that I posted, he is speaking to the two doctors from Bakersfield, California, and they were the ones that really got me to start speaking even more passionately because if you didn't watch their full interview, it should still be on my feed. You may have to scroll back a bit. Um, it's an hour long. It's worth every minute. And they're presenting their own information. And they are saying things like the number of suicides and the number of domestic violence and things that have gone up in response to the fact that people are not working and that people are stuck in their homes and that the kids can't go to school, these numbers need to be discussed just as much as the numbers of the death rate from this virus. And they're still not being discussed. I have not seen that on the mainstream media, even for five seconds yet. Not to mention the fact that someone has to go back and count where are all of the heart attacks and the cancer deaths and the numbers. I wanna see those numbers calculated over this time period because everyone's getting labeled with COVID as their potential reason for passing if they have COVID at all, even if they're completely asymptomatic in regards to the virus. So those are again, questions. We can have opinions, but we're not entitled to our own facts. Where are the facts? So Tony on this, panel that he does and you can check it out on his podcast so the clip I posted is only 15 minutes I think it's worth a watch for sure the two doctors are incredible they are passionate they're driven by their caring nature they care about the regular person the regular person is who is suffering here the people who are living paycheck to paycheck and they're the ones that are showing up in the ERs more at this point more than the COVID patients so the narrative needs to change, the plan to get back into society needs to change, and we need to continue banding together and asking why. The full interview is incredible, the people that he chose. It's two hours, I haven't gotten through all of it yet. So check it out on the Tony Robbins podcast. It is his most recent podcast. He has people like reputable docs from Stanford speaking on the difference between how um, epidemiologists, I'll just tell you this one quick thing that he said that I heard so far, how when epidemiologists are predicting an outbreak, like what happened with this pandemic, they always will go over the top with their predictions because they don't get in trouble if they over predicted. They get in big trouble if they under predict. And that ends up leading to a bias in the science. It kind of makes me think of like, the weather people where they panic about, they've got to panic about the potential hurricane, at least here in Tampa. Um, and then we're blessed that it doesn't happen. So if you think about that, it's, it's one thing to panic about a hurricane, it doesn't happen. It's another thing to shut down an economy where there's going to be all types of other things we haven't even thought about as fallout. So again, domestic violence, suicide, countries that rely on tourism, we haven't thought about that, that are not getting the people coming in and then they, they aren't able to eat. So it is time to open things back up. Kids need to go back to school. That is a huge piece because they are handling this virus just fine, 99% uh, in, in some cases, and at least over 95% of people under age 70 are asymptomatic. So it is time to open, it's time to see as we all are just go about this in a smart way, washing our hands, taking our supplements, and then we have hospitals that are ready. We have doctors that are ready. We are here. We're able to handle whatever may come moving forward. 
So that's what I wanted to bring up today. I hope this was helpful. Um, again, remember the quote that everyone is entitled to their own opinion. So please make your own opinion, but not everyone is uh, not his own facts. So let's keep searching for the facts. And I think you will find some great ones. I will dissect the two hour podcast and bring up the points that I think are valid. They are hardcore science, uh, talking about countries with the lowest uh, number of cases. And this one blew me away. One last quick thing before we go, Japan. And Japan has 127 million population and apparently only has like less than a thousand deaths. How is that possible? They did not do the same measures of social distancing. So something is going on. We continue with the why. We continue banding together. We're smart. We have opinions. When we stay in here, in our own intuition, with our own intellect, we can do incredible things like, guess what? Walk on fire, which is what I did. Check Tony's stuff out. You can find that online. And I'll leave you for today. I hope this was helpful. Please join me here tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye for now.